Well, mining companies have come under pressure battling rising electricity costs and low commodity prices to stay profitable. But the sector will also need to brace itself for a tough round of negotiations as rival unions NUM and AMCU go head to head in a tough war to win over members. To Michel Machaniele reports. Last week, Tuesday, more than 8,000 Lonman miners downed tools in an unprotected strike and gathered at Vondergop Stadium at Rustenburg's Platinum Belt. The striking miners, who mostly belong to the Association of Mine Workers and Construction, were demanding that the National Union of Mine Workers vacate its offices at the Marigana Mine, since gaining majority there. I mean, clearly one of the things which is shown to be wanting in our labor relations practice is this idea of the winner takes all. If your union has 50% plus one, you have a bargaining monopoly uh, and that's it, which is all very well if the union has 70, 80, 90% membership. But when the union has 55% membership and there's another union with 45% membership and they are excluded from the process, they can only be in trouble. NUM has been the dominant union player for over three decades and has lost tens and thousands of members in the last few years, mostly to AMCU. We have lost membership purely on the basis of intimidation, purely on the basis of killings. We have lost more than 20 members directly, shop to us who have been killed in that violence. So the recruitment which have happened, which have resulted to that membership loss, it is based on anarchy and violence. Since the violent wildcat strike in Marigana last year, AMCU has grown its membership by over 100,000. At Lonman Mines, AMCU now represents 70% of workers from 30% pre-Marigana. Although not initially recognised as a union, it has also been able to grow membership at Amplats by 40%. And it currently represents majority at Anglo Gold Shanti's Westwitz operations. But Noom doesn't seem concerned. So uh, very soon people are going to be uh, noticing this and they're going to walk away from this animal because it's not paying off. We have seen job losses, we have seen killings, we have seen murder, uh, we have seen people being injured. Although AMCU has been described as a group of radicals that incite violence, its strategy has been largely focused on feeding on the dissatisfaction of workers whose needs are not being met by current union representatives. Union members are using pay hikes as a way to attract and retain members, while company margins continue to be squeezed. Elise Tredom has been a wage negotiator for the gold and coal sector at the Chamber of Mines for the past 12 years. She anticipates wage negotiations to be even more difficult this year. We've looked at these demands and, for example, where you have a demand which amounts to a 60% increase um, for entry-level wages, um, that is something that, you know, it takes one by surprise. The African Workers' Union of South Africa, Solidarity and NUM have all submitted their wage demands to the Chamber. AMCU, however, has yet to submit its demands and has been negotiating outside the normal bargaining process. Nothing from AMCU as yet, although we have indicated to AMCU that in gold what we have done in the past and for many decades is that we have been neg negotiating centrally and that we would prefer for AMCU also to come in and be part of the central level negotiations. We've met with AMCU, we've explained to them how the process works, we've answered their questions and now we uh, are waiting to see what their response will be. After several attempts to reach AMCU, the union said it was unavailable for comment. In the next two months, 120 unions and representatives from mining companies will meet here at the Chamber of Mines in Johannesburg in what may very well be the toughest sector wage negotiations yet. Dumisho Mahanyele, Johannesburg.